All right, so today what we're, we're gonna be talking about is the chromatic scale. Uh, this is gonna be a, uh, a part of a series of videos that are gonna take us all the way up to making major scales. But first we gotta know what are all of our available notes to make these major scales and that's what a chromatic scale is. The chromatic scale, it's spelled like this, chromatic. Chromatic scale is all of the notes available to us, okay? So uh, if you were thinking about it on the guitar, you could think about just moving up, playing a scale by moving up one fret at a time. We'll go to the B string because it'll make sense in a second. But we'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 to 12. And that's when we have another C note. But that is the chromatic scale, just all of the 12 notes available to us moving up one fret at a time. And we're gonna represent them here in something that kind of looks like frets. It's gonna, it's gonna translate well to the guitar. This is one of the few things in theory that does. Okay, so the chromatic scale. Before we begin, I'm gonna give you three rules, three things to think about when making a chromatic scale. Number one is it goes from C to C. It begins and ends with C, okay? That's C note. Uh, a good way to remember that is the word chromatic begins and ends with C. That's a nice way to remember, a nice little trick there. Okay, number two is the general order of it is alphabetical order, meaning after you deal with the C note, the next note you're going to deal with is a D note. Next note you're going to deal with is an E note after that. Uh, remembering, of course, that the musical scale does not have an H note. It goes kind of from A, ends with G, starts over again on A. And then number three, we have one of those mnemonic devices because cats eat fish, and I'll explain what that means. But it is a grouping of two notes, B and C, because cats, E and F, eat fish. It means that when we're dealing, going between those two sets of notes, between B and C and E and F, um, there's kind of an exception to a rule that we, that we typically do when we move from note to note. Okay. So C to C, alpha order, because cats eat fish. Have those three rules written down somewhere in your notes. Go to them every time you need to make a chromatic scale. There's one other thing we need to talk about before we move on so that we can have, make sure we have all of the fundamental understanding we need to make a chromatic scale. And that is, we're gonna be seeing a lot of these. This is something called, a, again, it's a hashtag sign, a pound sign, a number sign, however you wanna think about it. But this is called a sharp. And then this one kinda of looks like a lowercase b. This is something called a flat. Sharps and flats, okay? And all a sharp tells us to do is to go up one fret, up in number. So again, if you're on fret one, a sharp would put you on fret two. If you're on fret five, a sharp would put you on fret six. It just means go up one fret. And flat's kind of the opposite. It says go down one fret. So again, if you're on fret two, go down to one. If you're on one, go down to zero. If you're on zero, oh, we're in trouble. Kidding. Okay. So sharps and flats. We're going to be using a lot of them. You're going to be seeing a lot of them. You kind of know what they mean. Okay. So here we go. We're going to begin. So you're going to kind of run through each one of these three rules every time we got to move on to a different space or a different fret. So starting on fret one, we're going to have a C note, okay? So the second rule, we're going to move on to a D note, okay? So that's the next note we're going to be dealing with. It's not necessarily going to be the next space. I'll explain. Let's go ahead and move on to rule three, two. I'm gonna go ahead and write up above here my because cats eat fish rule, okay? And again, what that's gonna tell me, this you can kind of write on the top of your page just to go back and check every time you're moving on. But every time I need to move on to a new note, so in this case, I'm looking at C and D, so I'm going from C to D. 
gonna go ahead and look here. I'm gonna go C to D, nope, checks out. C to D, nope, checks out. So what that tells me is in the music, we don't just move up a fret to go to D. If you remember, we've already made a C major scale in class, right? We've gone G, A, B, C, D. C being on fret one, D being on fret three. I'm on the B string now. And you can think of this chromatic scale as existing on the B string. Um, but, okay, so I have a C note here, I have a D note here. What am I calling this middle one, this thing in between? Okay, and this is where those sharps and flats come into play. So if I have a C and I put a sharp on C, remembering what a sharp does, it's gonna bump me up to fret two. So I'd be using second finger on fret two. This would be a C to a C sharp. Well, what if, what if I'm here on a D note and I need to put a flat on it? So if I put a flat on this D note, it's gonna move me to the same fret. Remembering a flat moves you down by a fret. So D, down to D flat. Either way, I'm gonna end up on this second fret, C sharp or D flat. So these in-between frets are gonna have two names. I'm gonna call that space of the chromatic scale or that fret of the guitar, I'm gonna call it C sharp, D flat, okay? For now, it's gonna kinda exist with two names. And then fret three is gonna be a D, okay? So now I've handled C to D. I'm just gonna move on in alphabetical order. Next letter after D is an E, so D to E. Check out, checks out. So that means I'm gonna need this D up to D sharp, E down to E flat space, okay? So, so far I got my first five spaces. I've gone from C all the way to E. Let's move on in alphabetical order to an F. Let me check. Is this E to F? Nope. Is this E to F? Sure is. So let me go ahead and cross that off. That means I've used it. I don't have to check it anymore. All this tells me, this E to F, this because cats eat fish rule. And what this tells me is I get to be lazy on this one. I don't have to make any of those sharper flat spaces. I just get to move right along to an F note. Easy, okay. What letter comes after F? G, let me check F to G, nope. That means I need to go F up to F sharp, G down to G flat. So now I have an F sharp G flat and a G space. Okay, moving along. Remember there's no H note, our musical alphabet uh, ends with a G and then starts over again on A. So I'm going to an A next, G to A, nope, checks out. That means I need a G sharp and an A down to A flat space. Okay, I'm all the way to A, I'm getting close. Remember it ends with C. So let me see what's moving next in alphabetical order, A to B, nope. So I go A up to A sharp and B down to B flat. And then finally, I'm back home. And here's what's cool, B to C. There's my second because cats eat fish rule break. So that means I get to be lazy, I get to move right on to C. There's my chromatic scale. This is fret one, that would be fret, well, fret 13. How do I know I did this right? always 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 or at least until you're very very good at this it's always a good idea to go back and count your spaces there should be 12 different notes on the chromatic scale meaning don't count c twice this is the same c this is just to kind of show you that a chromatic scale can keep on repeating if we want it to uh, you're just repeating the same notes in different registers higher and lower but let me count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Again, not counting C twice. If I got 12 different spaces, I probably did it right. Okay, chromatic scale. Practice them, get really good at them because every time we need to make a major scale, uh, we're gonna need to put one of these on our page. All right, good luck.